going on guys? So I'm gonna do a little workflow with my Autel Evo 2 Pro 6K files. And I basically wanna show you guys as a still photographer how I would capture, say, a good sunset scene or something a little bit more dynamic and complex. Say tonight I flew in a little area called Geneva, Illinois. It's the next town over. But as you see, I'm just gonna click. I got it open in a finder window on my Mac. I'm gonna hit the space bar and show you that I basically bracketed these shots. So I used the auto exposure bracket feature on the Autel drone, but DJI has that as well. And if you see, this is great for the town. So this is the town exposure. Everything looks pretty decent over here. But if I were to take this in, and it's a raw file, so it's a DNG. If I double click on it and open it in Photoshop, if I bring the exposure down to try to recover some of it, you're gonna see I'm not gonna actually be able to get this area to look good. It's gonna be still too blown out and not look like the sunset did. So if we look over here, I took another exposure and look at that. The sky looks way better. So with this, I could either take, let me see, I'm gonna click the files and toggle back and forth and they shifted a teeny bit because obviously the drone is in the air, but I could align them, I'm sure, with no problem, and just bring in the sky. Or I could possibly take this file, since it's a raw file, a DNG, open it, and we can see right away, if I go and increase the saturation, for example, maybe crank the dehaze a little bit, not even. Dehaze can sometimes actually make it look kind of weird and a little too much but say I recover some of the highlights a little bit, you can see the actual sky looks really a lot better. So now I can go ahead and I have this, if I hold the option key down, I can toggle between opening a copy or a smart object. And if I go into this, if I click, I'm in camera raw plugin, I'm gonna click this. And as you see, I have open in Photoshop as smart objects. And what this essentially allows me to do is do something kind of cool by doing, I'll show you here, hold on. It's kind of hard to explain. Smart objects are essentially opening the file. They're not rasterizing the file, so it's not pixels. It's actually like a vector-based type file. So if I open the smart object, this is what's gonna happen. I'm gonna do that. And if I control click or right click, and I get this contextual menu, I'm gonna go ahead and do new smart object via copy. And all this essentially does is allow me to get back in to the raw file. And now say I wanna to try to lighten this up and make this exposure better, not for the sky. I'm gonna increase the exposure and voila. Now I have this same one file to be able to do the sky and the actual town. So now if I go ahead and I have two layers, right? So I got the same file but since it's a smart object, I basically opened multiple ones because I did that new smart object via copy. And now I have this one for the sky, so I could even name it sky. And this one for the town, town. So now that one's visible, it's on the top. And if I punch a hole with the layer mask by hitting this little icon right here, now I have this white box, that's my layer mask. And if I go ahead and switch by hitting the X key, you're gonna see over here, it's gonna to toggle the to black. I'm gonna hit my B key, which is my paintbrush. And I'm gonna kind of go ahead and make my paintbrush bigger. I'm gonna hit the zero key to get 100% opacity. And now we paint in the sky and make it kind of like we just start painting a little bit. Maybe I take, the five key and get 50% opacity. And maybe I make that area a little darker and kind of do a little vignette kind of thing. But this is again, kind of where you start just toggling and painting and kind of getting creative. And you can kind of do something like that. Maybe I don't need this part of the town. So in focus, this is more of the focus over here and do something like that. Now I'm painting with my Wacom stylus 
and my tablet. And now maybe I don't even need that so bright. And just so you guys are aware, the viewer's eye is going to be drawn to the brightest part in the image. So right now, the brightest part of the image is basically right over here, which is good because that's kind of where I want it to be drawn to is this kind of zone, but maybe not necessarily the roof. So maybe I go ahead and make that a little bit less. And if you see, I got my opacity of my brush at 40%. If I hit the two key, it will go to 20%. And maybe I make my brush a little smaller, get that a little darker, not so it looks dark. Like I don't mind that it looks white, but again, just a reminder visually that again, the viewer's eye is gonna be drawn to the brightest part of the image. And ideally it would be something a little bit more interesting but it is what it is, and it's basically, as long as it's in this general area and the whole picture kind of comes together the right way, maybe I could even lighten this up a little bit. Yeah, maybe that looks a little weird. This is, I think, like their state building or something. But when you're working in Photoshop, you wanna do a lot of little subtle moves. You don't wanna make big, broad adjustments or make it look like it just is too much. I don't know. It needs to be blended, essentially. That's what I'm trying to say. You need to kind of blend every move so it's very gradual. So Shift-Command-F will actually fade the last command. So every move you make, if you hit Shift-Command-F, it will actually give you this, and you could fade that move. So you can really fine-tune and feather every move you make. So say I have this right now looking the way it is. I can go ahead and flatten this, essentially rasterize it. I'm just doing keyboard shortcuts because I kind of do it second nature. I'm gonna go Command J on my Mac, duplicate the layer, and now I have some plugins that I work with. Like I'm gonna go on a filter, I got On One, which is a cool software company. I'm gonna use this Effects 2020 and watch what I can do. So I'm just basically taking the file, tweaking it, and I got it on a separate layer so I isolated it, so there's nothing I can really do that's gonna damage it, it's a raw file, but look at that. That really comes together, right? So, again, preview, before on one, after. Maybe it's too much for you, maybe it's not. But, at the same time, people love drama and dramatic, and I'm just gonna stick with that and rock it. But now I can go ahead and fine tune, since I have the original one, on a separate layer because I duplicated the layer and maybe I don't want some of this too blue or I don't know I'm just gonna go ahead and make another layer mask and make sure I'm on my black so I'm gonna conceal or whatever with black so I'm gonna use the black paintbrush to basically bring in this other layer and now I can kind of use say a 60% opacity brush and maybe I just make it a little less maybe I don't make it as noticeable that I just ran a filter. But like for people in this town, guarantee they would probably say this is a pretty shot. So let's see. So maybe like that move makes it a little bit less kind of drama. And there we go. So we have that from, let's go to the finder window, this. So we had one file that I worked with and I know it's a lot to take in, I get that, but look at the exposure. I essentially captured it right in between the sky and this guy. And because it's a DNG file, a raw file, it gives me so much flexibility with being able to bring a lot of detail into the sky and compensate and recover different exposures. And it gives me the ability with a smart object to do that much more. So the knowledge to do what I'm doing really opens up a lot of possibilities. And I mean, look at this. So this one file went to, let me get back to Photoshop, to that. Now, if someone wants to print, that's what they want. You know what I mean? They want something really beautiful like that showcasing their town. And the detail's pretty darn good. It's not really noisy. I'm shooting at 100. I'm gonna bring up my info. And you can see I'm shooting at ISO 100, manual, always, 30th of a second at F5. So pretty darn good. So I am pretty impressed with the Autel Evo 2 Pro 6K 
one inch sensor files. I'm gonna hit command zero to bring it back. But look at that, that's amazing. Now I can go ahead and watermark that. Say A T O R T photography.com. Hit escape. Maybe I want to make it white, a little bit lighter. Bring that down. And voila, maybe do a screenshot of it. I'm going to bring a screenshot up, move it around. Shift Command 4 for those who don't know. Drag that over there. And now I can go ahead and post it on, say, one of my Facebook pages or groups. And now what I'm going to do is promote myself, right? So people are going to see my images. And then they may say, hey, can I actually buy a print of this? And guess what? They can. And I can go ahead and upload it. And let me see. I'm going to go ahead and find that shot. This was another shot. And I'm just going to take away this one because it's not really the hero shot. Oops, shoot. What did I do? So I'm just modifying my post, essentially. And voila. Now it's in a group with 30,000 people in the town where I'm at. And that's how I start generating people inquiring about prints. Because guess what? Nobody's really capturing the town's beauty like this. That's pretty darn good for, you know what I mean? And I could do this every day, basically. And I do do it like that almost every day. But I just want to show you what can be done with a file like an Autel Evo 2 Pro 6K. And let's do one more maybe. We'll go oh. Let's go ahead and hold on. Let me go ahead and mark this so I know I actually worked on it. And let's go to a normal kind of daytime shot. So the clouds are pretty epic today. They had a really nice reflection. I almost crashed into some wires that are hanging over this river. <laughs> kind of sketchy. So something like this, even though it's not a shot that I really love, but it looks a little bit better as far as the exposure. And as you see, if I just lighten it up a little bit, and I'm looking at this town kind of side, the bottom of the image. So when I look at these images, I essentially look at the sky as one part of the image, and then the bottom part, like the town or whatever it is, the landscape as the other part. So you're going to need to get exposures for both the top and bottom image. So maybe I bring the saturation up a little bit, kind of get this to all look decent. Maybe I warm it up a teeny bit. Maybe I don't. Maybe just like that seems pretty good. Try dehaze. That looks all right. It kind of pulls things together a little bit. Dehaze can get kind of crazy if you go a little too much. But Command Z always undoes your last command. So just kind of use it as a toggle before, after. Like does before look better? Does after look better? So I'm going to stay with that. And then I'm going to go ahead and go open object. Now mind you, I'm in the smart object thing. And now I'm going to hit the control key again because I'm using my stylus and I'm going to do new smart object via copy. And this little thing in the lower right hand corner basically shows you that it's a smart object type file. So I'm going to double click on the actual icon and now I'm just going to focus on the sky. So I'm going to do whatever I can to make the sky look as good as it can look. So I'm going to bring the exposure down to kind of pull in some of those clouds and I'm probably probably gonna hit the dehaze a little bit and I don't know I mean I guess it's just kind of a weird sky it kind of looks like there's some rain squall or something over there but I can't really get it to look like as blue and as nice as I kind of want to I don't know why like that's pretty cool I guess in a way it's dramatic let's just stick with that for a moment so I'm gonna hit OK and now I got this, so this is the sky part. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold the option key down and it's gonna do a conceal all layer mask. So watch, I'm gonna hold the option key down, click this, and it's basically gonna hide the top layer with the sky move that it just made. But now if I go ahead and use the opposite color, not black, I'm gonna paint in with white. So I'm gonna make sure over here, I'm gonna hit X key and it's gonna toggle these guys. So my foreground color is now white and I'm going to use my B key to do the paintbrush tool. And I'm at 60% opacity. I want 100%. And I'm just going to paint in the sky. 
now we have that. And maybe I'm gonna feather it a little bit by this little zone where I don't want it as dark because I just did that move and I'm using a feathered brush and I'm using 40% opacity. So I use my keyboard shortcuts almost like, I mean, my hand just kind of does its own thing. I mean, I can move my hand while I'm working the stylus and it's, you know, I've been doing it for 20 years. So I really, really am second nature with it and know all the keyboard shortcuts with Photoshop and it's just kind of, you know, you just cruise. But if I hit the F key, for example, we'll put it in full screen mode and we can see looks pretty good, right? So we have that from this and that's the power of a DNG file. If I tried to do this with a JPEG file, guess what? I would fail miserably and it would never get this type of result. And that looks pretty awesome. So, and I can go again further by say duplicating it. I'm just gonna duplicate it twice because I can, and I'm gonna go into one of these filters and let me go into on one again. I got Topaz Labs as well. So I got a few different plugins that I work with. I work with a couple other companies like on one and Topaz. So they do help me out with the software. And now I can go ahead, I'm gonna reset all and I can go and toggle some of the different little plugins. That looks really green. <laughs> so no, I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo that. And I'm just gonna kind of see, maybe one of them looks, these are looking pretty intense because I think I kind of already have it pretty intense with the sky at least. But you can see some will maybe work, some may not. Like this kind of works for just the town part. I kind of like the warmth that it introduced in this zone. So maybe I'll just hit done. So mind you, my mind's thinking and aware that I know I have it on a duplicate layer. So I can do tons of things with this. I can lower the opacity of the layer and just bring in a little part of it. I can leave it like that, full opacity. I can go ahead and hit a layer mask. And now I can go and use my paintbrush tool. And now I can use the opacity of my brush tool and do all kinds of stuff. So I can use 100%, do that, meaning bring back the original file. I can do 30% and just kind of you know, do little tweaks here and there. You can kind of get painterly with it and just paint and maybe touch a tree, maybe don't touch a tree, maybe get these little guys, or maybe you hit a little anything. You just basically are painting and kind of fine tuning. And maybe you can try the sky and see if the sky looks too much. Like the sky looks all right, I guess. Maybe a little too much over there. Too bright, I should say. And you kind of always like a little vignette. A vignette will kind of draw your eye towards the center of the image. And there we go. Another image of a town. And the key is with this hotel, the files do look pretty darn good. So this is in inches, like 18 by 12. And if I wanted to make a 20 by 30 inch print, for example, I can do that and it will up -res it and it will process and up the file, and it should look pretty darn good still. And now we have a 20 by 30 inch, so if I wanna print this and say sell a $500, $750 print, I can go ahead and do that pretty easily, and this file will easily hold up to that. So I'm hoping this helps, guys, just kinda of give you a glimpse of the possibilities of what, say, a drone file, this is an Evo 2 Pro 6K file, but any drone like the Air 2S with a one inch sensor, Mavic 2 Pro, basically any drone really, you can utilize the same thing as long as you could capture raw. So hoping this helps a little bit guys, hit the subscribe button, like, and give me some ideas on what you would like to do. I am an expert level retoucher and color corrector and I can work files really well as a still photographer. So if you wanna know anything specific, let me know and I'll try to do a tutorial on it. So thanks guys, peace.